Good morning. I'm Natalie with KQNK. Today is Wednesday, March 20th. Currently with a few clouds, it is 43 degrees. The humidity is 56%. The wind speed is north at 10 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30. The dew point is 28 degrees. And the current wind chill is 37 degrees. It's 8.04 and time for Kansas News. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. Pittsburgh City Commissioners approved a measure keeping vehicles off of lawns. Julio Flores has more. At a commission meeting earlier this month, an ordinance banning the parking of vehicles on lawns, grass, or landscape areas was adopted by commissioners. Kim Froman, the Director of Community Development and Housing of the City of Pittsburgh. When there's vehicles, whether they're inoperable or they're operable, they're running vehicles or they're used daily, parked in the front of a home in the yard, um, you know, that's going to be where your um, your utilities are running. Um, That's not meant to have a vehicle on top of utilities. Sound courtesy of KOAM. I'm Julio Flores. First responders in Ellsworth County and Central Kansas are getting new communication equipment thanks to $670,000 in federal grant money. It'll go for 162 vehicles and handheld radios. The equipment they have now is showing its age and is expensive to repair. County commissioners could also look at improvements to the courthouse. This is Kansas Information Network News. In search of the perfect cut for your lawn? Join the pursuit by choosing from a full line of steel mowers. From gas and battery options to zero turns and push mowers, steel offers a wide range of mowing solutions for homeowners and professionals. Right now, get 0% financing on your purchase with a steel zero-turn mower. Real steel. Find yours at steelusa.com slash mowers. Available at select dealers. Financing available on qualifying purchases and subject to credit approval. See dealer for details. There's danger out there. It lurks on highways and quiet neighborhood streets. It's more likely to kill you than a shark and more terrifying than the biggest snake. Distracted driving claims lives every day. Every notification, swipe, social post, video, or selfie while driving risks your life. So while you might think public speaking or the zombie apocalypse is scary, what's really terrifying and even deadly is distracted driving. Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. Brought to you... Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. Preliminary groundwater level measurements compiled by the Kansas Geological Survey, or KGS, showed mixed results for western and south central Kansas in 2023, with some areas in the northwest and west central part of the state experiencing increases for the first time in three or more years. Brownie Wilson, the KGS water data manager, said in the Ogala portion of the High Plains Aquifer, the aquifer had a chance to reset in 2023, given some timely rains in the summer months, and measurements in those areas reflect a rebound from lower than normal groundwater levels caused by the extreme drought conditions seen in 2022. Though, unfortunately, south central Kansas missed out on those rains, and the dry conditions still persist today. The KGS, based at the University of Kansas and the Division of Water Resources of the Kansas Department of Agriculture, measure water levels in about 1,400 wells every year to monitor the health of the High Plains Aquifer and other aquifers in western and south central Kansas. Most of the wells in the network monitored by the KGS and the Department of Water resources are within the boundaries of the state's five groundwater management districts, which are organized and governed by area landowners and local water users to address water resource issues. The Kansas state government is looking for ways to protect against breaches after a major cyber attack last year, which happened before dawn on October 12th and compromised servers housed in the Kansas Judicial Center. And it also kept the Kansas e-court case management system down for more than two months. After that cyber attack that paralyzed Kansas courts, lawmakers are trying to toughen up the state's online defenses. And if passed, a new state law will set cybersecurity standards for state agencies and create new cybersecurity officers for each branch of government. The proposed law would allow the state two years to plan its upgrades and budget before implementing them in 2027. With cyber attacks becoming common, businesses and schools are also looking for more ways to keep personal information safe, as experts say that once information is in a system, there's not much that can be done. However, being proactive by using a password manager or two-factor authentication is a good start. 
They also warn to never use the same password in any system. Let a password manager take care of that. So, for instance, if someone gains access to your email, they can't start gaining access to other systems or programs. There are fewer than 2 million farms in the United States, according to the USDA Census of Agriculture, released last month, down from a peak of just under 7 million in the early 1930s. And any agricultural enterprise with at least $1,000 in sales was counted as a farm, excluding the family vegetable garden. The census showed Kansas followed the national trend with 55,734 farms, down almost 3,000 from the last count in 2017, and the lowest total in 25 years. And the average size was 804 acres, which was up 25 acres from five years ago. That total would be higher, but all land devoted to farming fell by nearly 1 million acres to 44,784,702 acres. Less than a third of farms had sales of $100,000 or more in 2022. The vast majority of Kansas farms are owned by an individual, family, or through a partnership. And just under 7% of farms are corporations, although most of which are still family-owned enterprises. While the number of farms shrank, the number of farmers topped 100,000, with more than a third of that being women. The average age of a Kansas farmer increased slightly to 58.2 years, 0.2 above the national average. However, the number of farmers 34 and younger grew by more than 1,100 to 9,700. It just so happens 2022 was a good year for farmers on the revenue side, with Kansas producers earning just under $24 billion, and livestock accounted for $15.5 billion of the total sales, with crops adding $8.4 billion. The expense side of the ledger tallied $21.5 billion, leaving a gross profit of about $2.5 billion, or less than $45,000 per farm. It helps to put in perspective how thin the margins are in farming, especially when the average acre costs $2,324 and the average farm has more than $200,000 worth of machinery and equipment. In Nebraska news, two Minden residents have been charged in two separate cases after they allegedly sold methamphetamine to a confidential informant a block away from each other. 41-year-old Jeffrey Fisher has been charged in Kearney County Court with one count of possession of methamphetamine, and 40-year-old Mike Eggink has been charged in Kearney County Court with two counts of possession of methamphetamine and four counts of child abuse. According to an arrest affidavit, on January 4th, a confidential human source purchased four grams of methamphetamine from Fisher in an alley in the 100 block of South Kearney Avenue in Minden, and the affidavit said the controlled purchase occurred approximately 500 feet from Minden East Elementary School. Court records showed that on January 24th, a confidential human source purchased 15 grams of methamphetamine from Egg Inc. at his residence in the 100 block of North Kearney Avenue. And the affidavit said the confidential human source made a second controlled purchase of 29 grams of methamphetamine at the same residence on February 12th. The affidavit also said three children were in the home at the time of the second controlled purchase. The residents where the alleged controlled purchase took place are a block away from each other. Egg Inc. is scheduled to appear in Kearney County Court for arraignment at 9 a.m. on Thursday. His bond has been set at $250,000, 10% of which would need to be posted for him to be released from jail. A warrant for Fisher's arrest was issued on Monday, and court and jail records did not indicate whether he had been arrested. However, a judge has set his bond at 10% of $100,000, and 10% of that would need to be posted for him to be released from jail. According to the Sheriff's Office, a man was arrested Monday after a short pursuit in rural western Lancaster County. At around 11.45 a.m., a deputy tried to pull over a Ford Fusion for speeding near Northwest 98th and O Streets. The driver, Damien Fanesca, refused to stop and the deputy chased him for about three minutes before ending the pursuit due to safety concerns. Chief Deputy Ben Houchin said shortly after, a deputy in an unmarked vehicle spotted Finesca near Southwest 40th and Van Dorn Streets and started following him. Finesca eventually stopped at a gas station near 17th and Washington Streets, where he was then taken into custody. During a search of the vehicle, deputies found a handgun and a small amount of marijuana. Finesca was arrested on suspicion of several charges, including felony flight to avoid arrest. I'll be back with more in just a moment.
Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. Unofficial minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education for Unified School District 211 that was held on March 6th includes that Principal Keyswetter and Mr. Hawks presented to the Board of Education the new graduation requirement for the upcoming freshman class and the classes following. A motion was made by Sean Katz to approve to change the graduation requirements for incoming freshmen and beyond, and it was seconded by Jennifer Miller, and the motion passed 6-0. Superintendent Roy explained to the board that the potential LOB percentage to be used for the next fiscal year must be reported to the KSDA by today, March 20th, and he suggested to the board that they report 33%, which is not binding. A motion was made by Jennifer Miller and seconded by Dina Winty to allow the USD 211 board clerk to report to the KSDE that they may raise the LOB to 33% for the next fiscal year, and the motion carried 6-0. Jennifer Miller gave an update of the last NCK SEC board meeting, and Dina Winty gave an update on the last Curriculum Council meeting. Michael Terry then stated that he had an upcoming PDC meeting on March 25th. Superintendent Roy shared with the Board of Education a new substitute pay policy for USD 211, and he asked the Board of Education to review the policy and make a motion to approve it. A motion was made by Jennifer Miller and seconded by Ryan Katz to approve the new substitute pay policy as presented, and the motion passed 6-0. After an executive session to discuss personnel matters pursuant to the non-elected personnel exception under COMA, a motion was made by Dina Winty and seconded by Jennifer Miller to accept the resignation of Megan Jocks as a VOC Ag instructor at the end of the 2023-2024 school year. President Michael Terry then adjourned the meeting at 8.31 p.m. The National Sorghum Foundation will soon open applications for three scholarships it has available to college students studying agriculture in the 2024-2025 academic year. And they are the Bruce Maunder Memorial Scholarship, the Daryl Rosenow Memorial Scholarship, and the Bill Kubeka Memorial Scholarship. To apply for the Bruce Maunder Memorial Scholarship, applicants must be sophomores through seniors and enrolled in agriculture-based degree programs. To apply for the Darrell Rose Now Memorial Scholarship, students must be sophomores through seniors and enrolled in agriculture-based science programs related to agronomy, plant pathology, entomology, and or plant breeding with an emphasis on sorghum. And for the Bill Kubeka Memorial Scholarship, which is for undergraduate students, sophomores through seniors, graduate students, and law school students, applicants must be enrolled in a curriculum related to agricultural economics, agricultural policy, or agricultural law. Each scholarship is valued at $1,500, and the application windows for each will run from April 15th to June 1st, 2024. More information about each scholarship's criteria and application forms can be found online at sorghumgrowers.com slash foundation dash scholarships. The Kansas Department of Transportation has started work on a box culvert bridge replacement project on K-18 in Russell County. The bridge is located approximately one mile east of the K-232 junction near Lucas. Traffic through the construction zone is reduced to one lane and is being guided by a temporary stoplight, and motorists should plan for minor delays of around five minutes. The Kansas Department of Transportation expects this work to be completed in August, conditions permitting. For more information, you can contact the Kansas Department of Transportation Area Construction Engineer Mitchell Johnson at 785-261-6135. Memorial services for Brian Gritz Urban, 61, formerly of Norton, will be held on Friday, March 22nd at 10.30 a.m. at the Plummer Gopper Funeral Home in Norton. And visitation will be from 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, March 21st, also at the funeral home. 
A private family inurement will be held at a place special to Grits, and memorial contributions may be made to the Norton Public Library and may be sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton. Condolences may be left at plummergobber.com. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll be having Ike Burger, homemade bun, sweet potato french fries, dill spear, pears, and milk. For Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be chicken fajita, fruit, and milk. And for Northern Valley Schools, your lunch today will be biscuits, gravy, potatoes, vegetable, and fruit. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, it should be sunny with a high near 58 and an east wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour. For tonight, increasing clouds with a low around 34 and an east wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour. On Thursday, it should be partly sunny, then gradually becoming sunny with a high near 62 and an east wind of 5 to 15 miles per hour. And on Thursday night, it should be mostly clear with a low around 39. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you got bugs, we don't want a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast... On Friday, it should be sunny with a high near 59 and breezy with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. On Saturday, there's a chance of rain and snow showers before 1 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be mostly cloudy with a high near 53 and breezy. On Sunday, there's a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 1 p.m. It should be partly sunny with a high near 68 and breezy. On Monday, there's a 40% chance of snow and patchy blowing snow. Otherwise, mostly cloudy with a high near 39 and breezy. And on Tuesday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 46. Currently, with a few clouds, it is 43 degrees. The humidity is 56%. The wind speed is north at 10 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30. The dew point is 28 degrees. And the current wind chill is 37 degrees. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 822. With today's inflation straining your budget, your Kansas Farm Bureau membership can help keep more money in your pocket. Save up to 75% off preferred home and office products with Office Depot. Special package pricing with lifeline screenings. Exclusive savings on post-frame buildings with QSI. And join the Kansans who've switched to Kansas Farm Bureau health plans. And enjoy significant savings on nationwide medical health care coverage. Join today. For a full list of benefits, visit kfb.org slash benefits. Your Kansas Sports Report is being brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver Savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. 
KIN Sports. I'm Spencer Dupuis. Kansas State season came to an end last night in the opening round of the NIT as the Wildcats fell to Iowa 91-82. Day Day Ames and Will McNair led the way with 16 points apiece. Cam Carter and David Gasson both scored 12 as the Wildcats finished the season 19-15. Hollywood Brown officially signed his one-year $7 million guaranteed deal with the Chiefs and he says he's excited to play with Patrick Mahomes. On the outside looking in, it just seems like a guy that's very passionate and I'm a very passionate person. He wants to win, do everything necessary to win and that's somebody you want to play with. You want to play with somebody that's going to bring the best out of you that's going to push your game to the next level and I feel like he, he's definitely one of those type of guys. A day after the Softball America poll listed Kansas as number 20 in its top 25 rankings, KU junior right-handed pitcher Katie Brooks has been named D1 Softball National Pitcher of the Week after her performances against Wichita State and number 19 Baylor last week. In 19 total innings pitched, Brooks allowed just three runs while holding her opponents to a 239 batting average. She also added two complete games, one being a shutout. She earned three wins over the week. Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupont. What is dedication? My daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. If there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around, and I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself, and me never just wanting to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike, and you didn't. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Are you struggling with health care bills? Norton County Hospital is here to help with Epic River Loan Solutions. Applying takes less than 30 minutes and everyone is approved regardless of credit. Break your bill into manageable automatic monthly payments to build your credit. Plus, no penalties for upfront or prepayment. Don't let health care costs overwhelm you. Call Kelsey today, 785-874-2220. At the Mid-America Farm Expo, it's our job to expose farm producers to new knowledge and tools that will help them achieve success by providing exhibitor displays, programs, and seminars. This is Justine Henderson with the Central Kansas Extension District, and I want to invite you to the Mid-America Farm Expo on March 20th through 22nd at the Tony's Pizza Event Center and Saline County Livestock and Expo Center. I am honored and excited to announce one of our new speakers, Linda Salem, who will be discussing success in business and having a voice in the industry at 1030 a.m. on Friday in the Tony's Pizza Event Center on the second floor. Join us at the Mid-America Farm Expo in Salina, Kansas. Kansas Agriculture Network Markets. Good morning, everyone. I'm Greg Akagi. Right now, let's check the weather. Good morning. A cold front continues to push from northwest to southeast this morning with northeast winds ushering in cooler and drier air throughout the day. Our highs will range from the 50s north of I-70, low 60s to the south of the interstate. A cutoff low over the southwestern part of the country will start to move east today as high pressure breaks down. This trough will slide into the southern plains by tomorrow, keeping high rainfall potential across Oklahoma and Texas while precipitation moves into southern Kansas. Thursday night, another disturbance will move southeast across the plains. The chance of light rain, a stronger system late this weekend with rain and thunderstorms and snow into early next week. A slight chance of thunderstorms in northwest Kansas today with a high in the low 60s. Sunny upper 50s in north central Kansas. Sunny cooler upper 50s in the northeast part of the state. Partly cloudy, windy, low 70s in southwestern Kansas. Sunny and 72 today in the south-central part of the state. Sunny with upper 60s likely in southeastern Kansas. I'm meteorologist Ann Holliday. As we look at the early calls this morning, first off on the livestock side, the futures expected to open mixed as far as the livestock trade is concerned. It's been a slow trade all day yesterday. And no cash sales today or yesterday as well. There is the cattle on feed report coming out Friday afternoon. So potentially, and we tend to see that on cattle on feed report days, that we won't see any trade until after that report comes out at 2 o'clock central time. Grain side of the ledger, we see wheat futures were down 8 overnight trade. Corn futures are down 2. Soybean futures are up 7. Equities are mixed looking for if any results of the Fed meeting later this afternoon. 
This is the Kansas Ag Network.